an increase in government spending. In other words, government spend on infrastructure, can build hospitals, schools. We spent quite a lot of money on the 2010 Soccer World Cup. We built some stadia. We have the Gaut train project. All of these represent government spending. An increase in government spending affects the level of demand in the economy. The initial effect is on the goods market. The increase in government spending leads to an increase in demand for goods and services. This increase in demand for goods and services leads to an increase in the level of output. We know that private consumption expenditure is a function of the level of output, so if there is an increase in the level of output, private consumption expenditure will also increase. Likewise, investment is also determined by the level of output, and this increase in output will lead to an increase in the level of investment. The increase in level of output does not only affect private consumption and expenditure and level of investment, there is also a spillover to the financial sector. Why is this so? Well, the increase in level of output also affects the financial market. The increase in level of output leads to an increase in the demand for money. We have an excess demand for money in the financial market. Therefore, we sell bonds, the price of bonds decreases, and the interest rate increases. Is this the end? No. We have seen that investment spending is a function of the level of output, but investment spending is also a function of the interest rate. So we go back to the goods market to indicate the effect of the change in, in interest rate on investment. The interest rate increased, therefore investment will decrease. This chain of causality we can also show graphically. We start with the ISLM model. We have the LM curve showing all the combinations of interest rate and income with the money market, the financial market is in equilibrium, and the IS curve showing all the combinations of interest rate and income where the goods market is in equilibrium. So this production level Y1 and interest rate make it 10%, both of these markets are in equilibrium. Now we have an increase in government spending leading to the increase in demand for goods and services and the IS curve shifts to the right. Nothing happened to the interest rate, but the level of output increased to this point. But this point is not equilibrium. Equilibrium is where the goods market and the money market intercept at this point. How do we get to equilibrium? The increase in level of output led to an increase in demand for money. We sold bonds, the price of bonds came down, and the interest rate went up. As the interest rate goes up, we move along the LM curve, and we also move along the IS curve. As the interest rate goes up, investment spending will decrease. This we've seen in the last step. So we move along the IS curve. At the same time, in the financial market, as the interest rate increases, we move along the LM curve until we reach equilibrium where both the goods market and the financial market is in equilibrium. We now saw that an increase in government spending led to an increase in the interest rate and an increase in the level of output. But how did this increase in government spending affect the other variables in our model? Well, we know that government spending increased. So if we compare equilibrium level A with the new equilibrium level B, we know at point B government spending has increased. This led to an increase in the demand for goods and services, increasing the output level. Private consumption expenditure is a function of the output level. If a private consumption expenditure has increased as a result of this increase in income, and investment spending is also higher. So level investment is higher at point B than at point A. If we come to the financial market, we see that the demand for money has increased, 
the price of bonds decreased, and this led to an increase in the interest rate. So the interest rate at point B is higher than point A. But this increase in the interest rate led to a decrease in investment spending. Now you can see, on the one hand, investment increased, on the other hand, it decreases. We're not sure about the net effect. The money supply did not change. So the money supply was stable in our, in our model. Likewise, taxes did not change. It was only government spending that changed with the fiscal expansion. Thank <laughs> you.